So yeah. we've got uh, we've got some news today. What we're going to be covering today is um, we're going to be talking about buying used machines, whether you should or you shouldn't, and if you should, what some tips are to avoid um, making some horrible and expensive mistakes. So you being a person who refurbishes machines are going to be the subject matter expert of this particular conversation. I'm going to make um, a few observations that I've had because I've had to buy, I suppose, quite a number of of machines for Mm -hmm. for doing tests. So I've got a little bit of experience. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I've had a little bit of experience of, of, uh, of, of things to look out for. So we're just going to run through some tips of what, uh, what to look out for if you, if you're going to be buying a used machine, because let's face it, it actually potentially can save you quite a lot of money. Um, yes. Yeah. Or, or so. you can burn through a lot of money very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Isn't, so life, which isn't, one <laughs> isn't life always like that? Uh, but <laughs> first, some news. So we have a winner for the beans that we were running uh, through May, the competition through May. Uh, and they were won by Adrian Cockle. So congratulations, Adrian Cockle. Uh, I had um, I had an email yesterday from Carvetti to say those are already in the post you one kilo of solitude espresso beans on the way to you now. Uh, do take some pictures and send them to us. Yes. And let us know how you're getting on. And we expect some Instagrams, some serum Instagramming. We, yeah, we definitely expect some Instagramming. So uh, that would be I great. know you do that. <laughs> and uh, and also um also uh, apparently he's changed the blend because the or he's not they actually went to blend they were a, a single estate not a single origin which means from one country mm-hmm. they're actually a single estate he bought all the coffee from one farmer i think he's changed it now because the, the harvest finished or he finished through the lot that he had um so it'd be very interesting to know how that is i might have to get some more mm-hmm. and so for next month make sure that you sign up because and there'll be a link below and I'll maybe make a little page here, yeah. um, but there'll be a link below where you can sign up. All you need to do is put your email address in and, and choose, you know, um, uh, if you want us to contact you for anything else, it's an opt in, not an opt out. So there's nothing sneaky or clever in there, but it means that we can contact you if you're a winner. Uh, mm-hmm. And we are doing a kilo of pea berries, Bilbao beans, which if you've listened to any of our conversations before, you know that we are a big fan. I think it made it onto one of our favorite coffees of last yeah. year. Yeah, it was one of the best ones that we had last year. Yeah. So there'll be a kilo of Bilbao up for grabs for someone's grubby little fingers to get a hold of. Uh, so for make free. sure you for free. Yeah. And we, we pay the shipping and everything. There's no, there's no like, there's no trap <laughs> you could have to worry about. But you can always send about 50, 50 pounds to Max. That, no, that's you all. can't. That's absolutely against the law, Max. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for making this whole show illegal. Uh, there you go that's how i roll <laughs> no purchase necessary <laughs> that's how he rolls uh, in jail as a gift so, <laughs> um do make sure you subscribe to the channel because it always helps us helps us grow and get the word out and uh, and obviously like these videos if you do or if you don't like them feel free to hit the don't like button people do still, that but still, still interact uh, some people do that yeah <laughs> just don't like things. us uh, I think it's the same person every time he comes in, just makes sure he puts his alarm clock on, comes in, makes sure he doesn't like that video, goes back to sleep. Yeah, uh, that's okay. It's the interaction. <laughs> it's you, isn't it, Max? It's um, me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so that's that. So I, I've got a few bits of news I want to run through, which will be relevant. I think people might be interested in, and then we're going to get down to talking about the, um, the, the tips, the do's and don'ts of buying used um, espresso machines. But, we were writing up on the website some stories this week, and I thought it'd be worth sharing because it's pertinent to anybody who's actually drinking coffee and not just buying machines. And that is that actually there is going to be, if I mean, there is already a bit of a coffee shortage going on. So you'll be noticing that some roasters may be changing uh, their blends or changing what they are offering. Um, and that is because there has been a terrible harvest in Brazil. Uh, there's been a drought, and uh, Brazil is obviously the number one producing country um, for Arabica beans and they have had a terrible harvest year and it's got so bad now that actually the price has I think it's gone up to the highest level they've seen in 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 many years um, to the point that actually now some farmers are trying to renegotiate or even renege on the contracts with the traders 
So the traders buy the coffee from the farmers and then sell it to the roasters. So some roasters are relying on that coffee coming in. And actual fact, some of that potentially may not come in because the farmers are finding they can get up to four times the price um, elsewhere right now on what we call the spot market, the spot price right now, compared to the forward price that they accepted a year or so ago. Mm. That's like a guarantee of being paid a certain amount of money. Um, the, 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 the market's very much moved in their favor and they're kind of thinking, do I want to honor that contract or make four times as much money? And if you're not a particularly rich farmer, that's a, it's a tough moral call to make. Um, combined with that, we've got a situation in Colombia where a number of importers have not been able to get coffee out for a couple of weeks and they are anticipating delays of another four weeks or more as riots um, and protests are basically blocking um, blocking the roads. So there's no logistics and people are trying to get coffee to their mill for processing and they can't do it. Uh, they can't get it to the ports either. So combined with that and, and other countries have also got bad harvests, we're basically seeing a peak in price and we're also seeing very difficulty, a lot of difficulty in getting um, those beans. So if you're in this particular, for instance, on our bean giveaway, it's a Colombian bean. So, um, you know, that's more valuable now. I mean, this is a huge, a huge, a huge deal. It's like a gift. It, yeah, it, it might be one of the last ones. Actually. It might be the last batch. I, he may not be able be to get any more once this goes. Once um, it's gone, it's gone. Actually, I do not do is I'll actually ask Gerald to make sure he puts a kilo aside. So that would be, <laughs> be a bit awkward otherwise. Send a message to Gerald right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they actually are having to, some importers are having to go back to, to their buyers, the roasters, and, and say, you know, look, pick something else because we can't get it. Wow. Um, all right. So, Max, let's go and talk about the, the, the tips, the tips from the top, top tips from the top, the Max, top on <laughs> buying. <laughs> Do you even machine. want to buy a used coffee machine? Why would you want to? I mean, obviously, it's cheaper, but I mean, it, uh, where, where would you start with this? So it depends. It depends who you are first. Personally, I, I always want to buy a, a secondhand coffee machine. And ideally, I want to buy a secondhand coffee machine from someone that doesn't really know what, what, what it was or didn't really enjoy it. So you take that because they didn't like it and they put a certain price tag on it. And that's when you get the most bang for your bucks. The drawback on that is that you don't know what conditions the, ma the, the machine might be in. For example, uh, the, the gadget, the, the D90 that I, re that I restored, that was sitting in, um, in, in a basement for um, God knows how many years, probably 10 years. And yeah, it was nasty inside. It was just nasty. <laughs> um, so that, that's the thing. However, personally, I would say always try to get a second-hand coffee machine because these are, these are not consumables most of the time. Unless you get very cheap ones, coffee machines are not consumables. They are machines that will last you tw easily 20, 25 years, 30 years. So anything from the 1980s, it's potentially still fine. Do they, I mean, has there been like major changes in technology or does it not really matter? It's really no, actually no. If anything, they made them lighter so that you have, uh, it's they're faster to heat up. They are faster to respond. You might get a little more features. Of course, the advanced ones, I'm talking about uh, Gaja and the, I mean, the, the Gaja classic, they're about. Some stuff like that, that hasn't really changed in years. And uh, they did change it once and they actually went back on their design because it, was, it wasn't good. Yeah. The Ranchilio is another example, actually. They haven't changed that design in, in donkey's years. Exactly. So you want to get something that is, is used because it's cheaper. It, it will be significantly cheaper. The problem is, in some cases, it might be the steel of the century. In some other cases, it might be a money, a money pit. What would be the major differential? Like, is there a something in particular to look out for? I mean, you know, there's there's loads of tips if you're buying a used car. Everyone knows. You Dust is a sign that machine hasn't been used a lot or has been sitting for a while. So you might be finding um, lime scale in it. You might be finding some some bits that are got that got stuck together. 
but nothing that you can't really undo with a, with a descale or a, a thorough descale. Um, you want to look at the state of the machine because, for example, if, if, if you see, for example, a lot of coffee stains, that means it hasn't been really taken care of. Um, you see that from the porta filter, when you take off the filter, you can you, you can see w what condition that is the the porta filter underneath the underneath, underneath the basket underneath yeah. the basket yes that Sorry, is actually a really good tip and I do that and and it's quite amazing because a lot of people will clean the basket thinking they're cleaning the porta filter uh -huh. and of course the holes go straight through into the underneath part of the porta filter if you take the basket out and look underneath if that yes. is a grungy nasty mess and you can tell not, there yeah if the machine has been has been cleaned. Um, regularly and if it's been cleaned regularly you will see that probably you you have exposed brass and that's fine that's absolutely fine because you will you will lose the the chrome finish pretty much very soon uh, but if you see the brass that's good if you see a black mess that means that the machine hasn't really seen a lot of kafiza mm -hmm. Cafe is just a cleaning agent, right? Yes. Or pulley or whatever. Yeah, or pulley or whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so so yeah. looking at the state of the machine, first of all, looking mm -hmm. at the cleanses. So not what we're basically saying is look beyond the surface dust. If there is a grunge on it, and we know what a grunge means, if there is like a, a, an encrusted, an encrusted um, uh, nature to the dirt, mm -hmm. then that's, that means that it's just not been taken care of. Now yeah. I've got a tip and this is my tip. And it's an interesting thing that you just said. If it's a, a sort of a, a heavy duty, proper machine, I almost go in some respects the other way and saying, if, if I was buying a machine, uh, I would make this qualification. Let's put it that way. If I was buying a machine that someone was going to pack up in a box and send to me, on eBay or whatever else, mm -hmm. I would never buy a quality heavy machine that way because A, they're not going to have the original packaging mm -hmm. and B, those machines just are so susceptible because of their weight to being damaged in the, in the post, in the shipping. Um, a lot of companies now selling new machines are very cautious about how they send them. Some, there's one here in the UK which actually won't send them. They'll only, you have to pay for it yourself. You either pick them up from their warehouse or they will send a guy, one of their own people around to deliver it because they get too many damage, uh, damaged goods. Mm -hmm. However, if you've got one of those things that one of those machines you love, what are they called again? The, the Sage, the, the Brevels, you know, you love those machines. Yeah. If you were to have one of those, which is largely made out, a lot of plastic in it, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, decent quality plastic, most of it, but it's plastic. It's a lot lighter generally. And because it's a more modern machine, it may, people may well have the box with the styrofoam mm -hmm. around it and all the rest of it. That's something I might risk being sent in the post. Yes. Um, actually, funny enough, I would uh, probably not do that because that is one of the machines that is probably more difficult to repair. Yes. And I'm talking with my own personal perspective, obviously. So I am able to, and as anyone is really, to open the machine and, and uh, fix it up or repair the, 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 few, the few bits and pieces that can be in there. If you have to go through the, a Breville, I would actually struggle. But you wouldn't repair it. The point uh, is, is that you've got the protection on eBay that if it arrives and it doesn't work, as long as you've specified... Um, does this work? Does that work? Do all the features work? If, it, if it's not as described, you actually do have quite strong buyer protection on eBay. I don't like eBay for selling. I have to say I have been ripped off and scammed uh, by, eBay as a, by eBay as a seller. I sent a laptop and the guy claimed when it arrived that it wasn't even the laptop he ordered. And he basically just took out the box took out the laptop out of the box I sent and put some old other laptop in there and said, Hey, this is what I received. And eBay refunded him the 700 pounds. And I was out of the laptop and the 700 pounds. Um, so from a seller's point of view, it's actually not great from a buyer's point of view. 
you make a complaint and um, and 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 they're pretty good at holding it up. So I, mm. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't done that. I've never had to make a complaint on a coffee machine, but I would say, I mean, obviously the, all the usual things apply with, with, with yeah. eBay, but I <clears> would say that the prices really drop a lot on those sages. You can get them at less than half price for not mm. for one that's not that old, much less than half price. So for a couple hundred pounds, you can go and get yourself or, you know, maybe $250, $300, you can get yourself a Barista Express. I've seen their dual boiler, you know, relatively sort of higher up at the top end of the machine of their line going for around 500 pounds, mm. which is the same price as a new Gagia Classic uh, Pro, but for a dual boiler machine. I, I think there's there's some potential there are some potential bargains there if you're dealing with a reputable seller. Yeah, uh, yes, true. But in some cases, you actually find these things as uh, uh, people empty basements, uh, houses, and they sell them for spares, and that's yeah. the thing. For example, if you start going for expensive machines that have to be plumbed in, lots of people find them or come across them somehow. And then they, they say, oh, I, I'm not able to test it. So I don't know. I'll sell it for spares. You sell it for spares, but they don't sell it for spares. They sell it for spares with, uh, the, with a price tag that is quite elevated. So these kind of things, I would say, try to go and see them. So if you're, if you're going to invest a significant amount of money, which to me is anything above 200 pounds, go see it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would say, well, it, obviously, the amount of money varies from person to person, what's a lot of money. But I would certainly say that for any machine that is a heavy piece of lump of metal and this traditional type of style mm -hmm. of machines, um, I would never buy one that's going to be shipped, which means it has to be one you're going to collect, which means it has to be local, and then you're going to go and see it. Yeah. And um, another thing that you want to consider is how easy to come, how easy it is to come across spare parts. Because, for example, you mentioned Ranchilio, and there is a lot of Ranchilio parts, but they're not as easy to find as Gadja. Like, yeah. I don't know. Well, whether... in this country, they're not. In, <clears> in the US, country, I think yeah. it might be very different. But in the US, for example, uh, in the US, it's very hard to find some parts for some Italian made machines um yes yeah obviously you have to know your your own market you you know what's what's normally available uh for example if you have lots of expo bars well, go for it go for that one um but you know sometimes you find these very very niche coffee machines and then you before you go for it i would actually start asking around who has the parts and how much they are for example a couple of easy ones are go and have a look on espresso shops on sorry, espressoshop.com, I think, in, in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, in another one is Underground Espresso. Just have a browse and see what kind of parts are available. Then you can always get, um, you know, from a, from a dealer, you can always get uh, stuff from uh, LF components and stuff like that. But if they have to ship it to you, I mean, if they have to make it on purpose, I had uh, uh, a Nova Simonelli that needed a new boiler. It took it took two months because they make the boiler for you. It's a special wow. order part. You're absolutely right. I actually think that's almost the place to start <laughs> is to start saying, OK, oh, there's an interesting machine for sale. Let me go and see if I can get parts for it. And if you can't get parts for it, I mean, I'd be very wary about about buying something secondhand yeah. that I, I know I'm not going to be able to get any parts but for. Even if it works when you get it, it will eventually need repair. It will need servicing or, I mean, a silly thing, a knob breaks off. You have to yeah. find that knob. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. So, okay. So we've got, what have we covered? We covered um, uh, Spares, looking at the looks, yeah. dust. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tell you a little tip. This is for me, this is just, I noticed this is um, the steam wand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to know whether someone's taking care of a machine or actually knows how to take care of a machine, uh, just go zoom in on the steam wand. And if that thing's got burned milk on it, yeah, don't touch it. Because for me, 
Uh, anybody that has not purged and cleaned their steam wand when they've been using it doesn't know anything about cleaning coffee machines. And these things have to be cleaned and maintained regularly, as we as we all know. So that would be a, the first one for me. I'm always surprised, even in some coffee shops, um, where actually it's not so much coffee shops, but it's places I would call them um, like kiosks and things like at the airport and whatever, mm. where I'm looking and this guy's making coffees for, for people and I'm looking at, and he never purges the wand and that thing has just got a sleeve of milk up that steam wand. So uh, I would look at that because, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And it, we, well, it's also a health hazard, right? So they yeah. shouldn't be well, doing it. It's burnt. So it's 130 degrees. No, it's, it's okay. But no, but that just can't the milk. Well, if it hasn't done that, it's not so much on the outside, isn't it? The milk goes, can get up into the boiler and then the that bacteria is can breed. You, that is when you let it cool down. Uh -huh. It cools down again. If, if the um, anti vacuum valve fails, then the machine will drink. And right. if it drinks, then milk goes into the into the boiler and everything will will taste of sour milk everything right. yeah i know because i dropped some milk in the back of my car once years ago i mean years <laughs> ago but it was six months before the smell went um okay so that's my little tip is to check the steam wand max you got anything else um not on not on top of my head actually to be honest so it would be, yes, it would be definitely uh, 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 one thing, actually. And you were uh, you were almost swayed by me about it. What size porta filter you have? Mm -hmm. Because everyone nowadays has a 58 millimeter porta filter because it's common. It's the one for the gadgets. It's the one for everything that has an E61 group head. But if you buy a Sage, you need a tamper. You need a leveler if you use a leveler. If you buy um, uh, La Spaziale, you will need a new one. Yeah. So these are also other things that will add on to the cost. So for example, you find a machine that is, uh, oh, this is 50 pounds cheaper than that. Yes, but then you have to buy this, this and that. Mm. Yeah. And in fact, I would say, and I actually fell for this one um, when I bought one of the Sages that I got. I um, bought a, I bought it and I realized afterwards that um, he hadn't included the single wall baskets. He'd only used double wall baskets. He'd lost the single wall baskets with it. So that was an extra expense. It was an extra 20 something pounds for me to go and buy a sort of standard bog standard um, sage basket. And uh, so, and what I found actually later on was that depending upon the year of that model, that after a certain time, they came with both the double and the single walls. But before that time, they only came with the double wall baskets and you had to buy the single wall separately. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely worth asking what, what's on, the, what's on the, the list. What do you get with it? It's also worth asking whether he's got the original cleaning tablets or anything like that. Because again, because yeah, yeah. Again, somebody actually said this to me. You might think that's a silly thing to ask. But somebody said to me, yeah, yeah, I've got all the cleaning tablets there. They're still in the bag. <laughs> it's just that's what he said to me, and I thought I don't want them in the bag. I want them in the machine. Yep. Okay. Fine. It's like it was a nine-month-old machine, and he hasn't cleaned it yet. The cleaning tablets are still in the bag. So find out what um, what's coming with it because that might give you some indications onto uh, how the machine is being used. Um, and I've got I've got one other tip, and uh, well, it's not so much it's not so much on the buying it. It's more on the once you've bought it. But um, I think a lot of people, and I've, and I've bought several of these uh, Sage machines now used um, for, for reviews. And every time the person has given it to me with the original water filter still in it, they never change the water filters. I don't know what it is. They've never changed the water filters. And the last guy I actually picked up on it and I said, have you changed that water filter? And he goes, no, 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 we didn't have any, I didn't have any coffees. I said, how long, how old is the machine though? He says, it's like, it's six months or seven months old. And I said, and he said, but we haven't had that many coffees. And he didn't realize it's not down to how much coffee you have in that water filter. Once it's wet, it'll attract bacteria. Uh, so you want to just make sure you give the machine a real clean, take out those water filters. If this comes with a water filter, take that out. And, and again, make sure you can get, you can get, you know, copies of those or get those online. Um, yeah. So you're not, you're not, drinking the coffee 
with those six month old water filters in. It was a quick, uh, it was a quick show. I don't think, I think it was a quick show. Was it a quick show? Yeah, it's about half an hour. That's minutes. pretty good for us. So we're going to try and keep these two around that kind of that kind of timetable. Um, I'll yeah, be moving like a rat in... for about forty minutes. Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going to I'm going to be moving house because uh, I need to you know obviously follow your example. Uh, I will be moving house in three. I think it's three weeks. Wow, it goes well. You're going to have nightmares about boxes. Boxes. I have been looking at boxes. Boxes. Um, no, stop it. I've been looking at boxes and I don't know what size box to get. Um, and should I get a single or a double wall box? All of them. Get all the boxes. But how yes. many? But they come with different quantities of do you want do you want X number of smalls, an X number of larges, an X number of mediums? I don't really know. Just re just reply to the email saying yes. Mm, okay. So I'll be doing that. Uh and uh, next week we will, I will be putting some pictures up actually of um, the coffee. Uh, we're putting that up on the website of the Peabury's uh, Bilbao. Oh, that's that a nice up. one. That's really nice. It's really nice. Uh, I might actually order some extra for myself. Um, and uh, and uh, so make sure you sign up for that. Don't miss out. And we will see you all next week. Yay.